We're going to talk about how to set up a VPN router in your home. A VPN router allows you to keep everyone in your household safe on a VPN without having to install it on every device. Also, if you have guests, they will also use a VPN automatically if they share your network. It's pretty simple and I'll show you exactly how to wire it up. Stay tuned. In a typical household, there are going to be many devices, computers, phones, tablets, IoT devices, TVs, Xboxes, and so on, all of them using the internet. In addition to that, you will have guests in your house and they will ask to borrow your Wi-Fi. So here's the problem. If you're very careful with your activity on the internet, being careful with location permissions, and always being on a VPN to hide your IP address, your work will be invalidated by others who use your network. Here's an example. If a guest comes to your home and has location on, on their phone, basically your IP address and location data will now be transmitted to third parties and this is going to be sold in a reverse IP lookup database. Companies like Skyhook Wireless and many others sell this data. This will allow anyone to pinpoint your identity and exact location simply by knowing an IP address. So you want to stop this. Another concern is anyone that uses Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, meaning Facebook properties. These apps will track the MAC addresses of everyone on your network, match it to an IP address and Facebook identity, and basically this will fingerprint your mobile devices if you're elsewhere, and they'll know who you hang around with. So I hate this stuff. I protect myself in the easiest way by making sure everyone in my house is on a VPN. So I'll show you how this is set up. In this example, I use a hardware called a Brax router, which is one of the products I make. Okay, we're gonna start with this. This is a modem from my cable company. This happens to be a Ares model from Spectrum. And you can see that's where you plug in the cable and that's where the internet comes out now some companies sell you a modem combined with the wi-fi i don't like doing that but you can have that the problem with that is sometimes you can't configure the modem the carrier will often give you a pre-configured wi-fi and you can't set it up your, the way you want so anyway the way i have it on mine is this is my main my main unit and i'm going to move it over here and then I have a Wi-Fi. This happens to be an Apple Extreme. And this is going to be, for this example, going to be my main Wi-Fi. This is the one that's uh, not going to be set up with a VPN. So this is the way I, I have it. Now you can have different kinds. Uh, I have this one. This is a Apple Express. This is an Apple Extreme. An Apple Express. This one is a Nighthawk, Netgear Nighthawk. So they're all the same, but for this presentation, I'm gonna stick to the Apple Extreme. So the way you would do that is you would plug in the ethernet cable from the modem into your Wi-Fi, which I'm gonna refer to as Wi-Fi 1. This is your first Wi-Fi so normally you're gonna look in there and see one that stands up by itself and that's the one that's gonna be the internet so I'm gonna plug it in to that again it differs on different ones so here on an app, another Apple's the same that circle one is the one that goes to the internet on a Netgear they actually have it colored differently and if you look closely they actually label it and said internet so once you have that this configuration would give you a modem and a wi-fi so you would have wi-fi with this obviously without a vpn so now the question is 
what would you need to do then to set up a Brax router? So this is a Brax router. So the way you would normally set this up is you would put Brax router as one of the internet, one of the ethernet connections in there. And now what will happen here is now you will have two Wi-Fi's. This will be a Wi-Fi and that will be a Wi-Fi. So an Apple Extreme is pretty fast. So that's a very fast Wi-Fi. Now this one being a Raspberry Pi 4 has a limitation. The speed of the Wi-Fi on this maxes out at about 50 megabits per second. So you can leave it like this, this is fine, runs fine, and then you would have your VPN on this. This again is a VPN router. So wherever you access from your device, you're gonna have a non-VPN Wi-Fi and a VPN Wi-Fi, and whatever one you connect to will determine if you're on a VPN or not. Now the advantage of having a Brax router is that you don't have to worry about setting up each individual phone, for example, a phone, uh, like this and you have to put the VPN software on every device in many households you have many many phones many many computers iPads tablets and many people so it's very very difficult to set up a VPN for each especially if you have a TV and IOT devices so the best way is to do this because when you want to go VPN all you do is connect to the Wi-Fi and you're done. That's it. Connect to the Wi-Fi and you're done. This will default as the name home Wi-Fi and whatever name you, you have there. So this is the very simple setup for most of you and it's pretty much plug and play. You, you go do this setup and then later on I'll show you how you can actually go put in your credentials on here through a browser. So fortunately when you connect to this, this has a fixed IP address. So it's very easy to reach it on a browser. Now, this is not the way I have it set up in my case. The way I have it set up is I actually have mine as a wired router. So I make this into a wired router. This is being used currently as a gigabit wired router. So this is a Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm gonna show you the connections on a Raspberry Pi 4 and you'll see those are the blue USB 3 ports and the black ones are USB 2 ports. The USB 3 ports are much faster. So what I'm gonna do now to turn this into a wired network is I have this dongle. It's just a gigabit ethernet dongle with USB 3.0. How do you know it's USB 3.0? Because the USB is blue. And you see a blue connector in there that means USB 3. So this is the kind you want for a Raspberry Pi 4. Now this Brax router will run also on a Raspberry Pi 3 but you'll max out at around 20 megabits per second. It's a lot slower. So what you would do here is you would plug in the uh, dongle into one of the blue ports. And the way it works on the Brax router is anytime you plug in a dongle, you have to start it, wait a couple of minutes, and then turn it off and start it again. The reason we do that is the first round detects the device, the second round activates it. So you need that two rounds for it to auto detect so we don't have to configure the device. It's going to self configure once it knows that you started it with it. So that's what we're doing here. We plug in the ethernet dongle and from here I can attach this to a single Wi-Fi so this is let's say the Wi-Fi I want to connect it to all I have to do is plug in to the ethernet in there and plug the other end to the dongle now what, what is the difference between the original setting and this? This is a faster Wi-Fi. This is actually only $50 uh, Netgear Nighthawk. And the advantage is it has 802.11ac, which is a faster protocol. So I can have faster access through this instead of being limited to 50 megabits per second on that. 
So that's why you, you're actually very flexible. Now the problem is this now is a pure Wi-Fi connection. So what I'm gonna teach you now is to turn this into a much more flexible network like I had in my other video about my dope home network setup. So these are some of the devices that I actually use. So what we're gonna do instead of plugging in directly to the, to the Netgear, I actually have an ethernet gigabit switch. So again, it's a, called a gigabit switch, not just a standard switch, but a gigabit switch. So on the gigabit switch, you can plug in your internet into any of these, so any open port, so we're gonna pick one. And then you have four ethernet ports that you can use. So you can use this as a wired network. You can plug in your computers directly to that. And then you will have high speed up to up to one gigabit of speed to the internet if that's available obviously that's not available in a vpn a vpn doesn't go at one gigabit so the way you would do this then is you would plug in another cable like that and then this then would plug into your next wi-fi so this is a lot more flexible setup you have wi-fi one that's a gigabit router it's not gonna the wi-fi will turn off when you use that as a gigabit router this is going to be the switch wi-fi two and you can actually plug computers into these ports if you have any available ports there or these ports so in this particular model i actually didn't need the switch because this one already has extra ports on it. But not all Wi-Fi's have extra ports. For example, this one, the Apple Airport, only has one extra one. So it doesn't give you enough. So when you need more ports, then you're gonna need a switch like this. Now, it's called a switch, they're not expensive. They're fairly inexpensive, typically near $20. And this one has to be a gigabit switch. If this is not gigabit, you're gonna slow down your network since the router handles up to a gigabit of traffic. So that's the way you would set that up. So now, in this setup now, I have Wi-Fi 1, no VPN, Wi-Fi 2 with a VPN. So if you wanna to connect to the VPN, all you have to do is connect to Wi-Fi 2. If you wanna connect without a VPN, you connect to Wi-Fi 1. Now why do you need this too? The reason is many sites, not many, but some sites will block a VPN or Tor. You can also set this to be a Tor router. There's going to be some things you're not going to be able to do. For example, some banks don't allow a VPN. So in order for you to be able to do banking, then you need to have access to a Wi-Fi that does not have a VPN. So you can now use that for no VPN and use this for a VPN. So now to summarize, on this side of the network, you have a network without a VPN. On this side of the network, that's where everything is a VPN. Again, anything that you use, all these ethernet ports, on this side of the network will be VPN. All of these internet ports over there will not be VPN. Now, if you need more ports on here, you can do the same thing instead of using the switch over here. You can plug the switch over here and that expands your non-VPN ports. Now, in, in this demo, I did not plug in the power supply just because of room reasons, but all of these devices obviously need power. Raspberry Pi needs power over here. That needs power, that needs power, and that needs power. So I don't want you to get confused there, okay? So there's more cables, and that, again, to repeat, this needs the cable from your DSL provider. Now, now in some cases, you're gonna need an extended network where you need to have some of these devices far away from this setup over here. And that's why I use this. This is called a power line. 
and you can see it has an ethernet port there and then you just plug it into the wall and if you have two of these they will sync together and you will actually have an ethernet connection without wires so typically you can actually have two of these and instead of wiring direct you can actually attach one of these to that and another one of these to any device and you can extend your network and that's what I use when I need coverage beyond what wiring can do or if I don't want to wire it in my house through ceilings and such so this is again called a power line now very interesting thing here is if you want multiple power lines they actually will work on a single network if you plug in like three of these or four of these of the same model so the solution as I mentioned in another video is to use two different models of this and they'll actually act separately so that's one of the tricks that I do two separate models and they will work like independent circuits for power line that's it so now that's a simple setup and again one of the advantages of a wired VPN is that when your guests come in and they're using Facebook and Facebook will expose the MAC addresses of everyone on your network you're basically putting everyone in your house including guests and every device on there through the gigabit router through the VPN and again this can also be run as a Tor router if you don't want to pay for the VPN but a Tor router is very slow so I wouldn't do that uh, one thing you might want to do is have two of these one wired for a Tor network and one wired for a VPN network so again you have a third Wi-Fi that you can use so in theory you can plug in one other one of these and then plug it into another Wi-Fi and then you can have a third Wi-Fi that can then act as a Tor network so you can have a choice of standard uh, no VPN VPN network and a Tor network all controlled through these devices the Brax routers that's it after you install the VPN router on your network all you have to do is log into the Wi-Fi on the VPN side of the network any of the Wi-Fi's if you have several then you can connect to the router and configure it via a browser it's really simple the IP address is always the same for a wired network it's always 192.168.43.1 if you're using the Brax router by itself as a Wi-Fi router then it's 192.168.43.1 and this is all in the manual you just type that on your browser and then you can log in and here you can set up your operating mode if you have several Brax routers you can set up a router as a VPN router, a Tor router, or a regular router. You can see the parameters for your Wi-Fi. And you can see the credentials for your VPN subscription. If you change anything, just hit the save button. And then later on, you'll see the option to reboot. That's it. It's not hard to set up. Thanks for watching and the Brax router is available on my store which is in the description and if you like this kind of stuff please subscribe hit that notification bell and see you on my live stream or my next video. Thanks for watching.